Recently, the state removed the 8.5% cap for identifying <coughs> special education students with an expectation that that number of identified students will increase to approximately 11.6%. This will leave an approximately $3.2 billion funding cap for special education. How do you see this gap being bridged? And we'll start with Mr. Paxton. So as you all might know, there's some very recent uh, ongoing litigation with the federal government on this issue that will have a large part to play given the large contingent of federal funding that the state receives for these types of programs. Uh, and so we're eager to see what the outcome of this would be before we make any final judgments, but I anticipate that it will depend on that. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Next, Ms. Powell. The federal funding that we receive for our special needs kids is often uh, less than it actually takes to meet those needs. And it's particularly troubling at a time when you hear TEA talk about bringing in a budget where we're going to already see $3.2 billion in cuts to public education. We're going to have to go back to those things that I talked about in the beginning, where we review our budget with, a, with an eye to knowing that we have to take care of our students that are most in need and allocate those resources from our operating budget to make sure that we do just that in whatever shortfall that we have to make up from our federal funding. Thank you very much. 